What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Puma Evo Power Vigor 3D1 in the launch colorway which on the box is listed as black, black, black. But as you can see, these aren't all black. It's kind of got this interesting purple and green color changing effect. We'll talk about that more in the video. But anyways, here is a look at the shoe. This is essentially a different variation, a newer, more expensive variation of the Evo Power Vigor 1, which is an excellent boot, one of my personal favorites. This shoe retailing for $55 more from 220 to 275 now is an interesting variation of the same concept. Obviously the sole plate remains the same. It still uses AccuFoam, it still uses that light synthetic, but they've changed some things specifically around the middle of the shoe where they added an Evo knit type material and the overall construction is more different than the regular Evo Power 1 than I was expecting. And the tech specs don't do a great job of explaining exactly what's happening here. So I'm going to go over everything in detail in today's video. We'll take a look at the weight of the shoe as well. And of course, take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $275 retail price. Now included with the shoes is a string bag, which is a nice little extra. You get it with a lot of top end models, this one included. But let's focus on the shoes. So obviously the main reason why people got excited about this and the most noticeable difference in comparison to the regular Evo Power is I guess two main things. One is the texturing on the surface. You can see that it has a 3D effect and that those little AccuFoam dots are actually textured on the outside. You can individually see and feel all of them because it's not a completely flat surface like you'll find on the regular Evo Power Vigor 1. And then two, you can see across the top of the foot as well as kind of this little collar extension piece, you have a knitted material. Now in the tech specs, the knitted material is not listed as Evo knit, even though it's pretty much exactly the same as the Evo Touch Pros, which that is called Evo knit. So I'm not sure exactly why there's a discrepancy there, but we'll call it Evo knit for the sake of simplicity, because that's pretty much what it feels like to me. And basically you have this spanning through the middle of the shoe. Now my impression was that the entire upper was this Evo knit base, with the new material on top, the Adapt Light Synthetic with the 3D texturing, and that would be the variation in comparison to the regular Evo Power Vigor 1, but that's not actually the case. What's happening here is that basically they cut out the middle part, they added this Evo Knit material, which is elasticated, it's got little holes through it as well once it stretches out, so in terms of water resistance, these aren't gonna be all that great, but it will allow for some nice breathability and a nice clean feel overall, feels very comfortable, and then the extension pieces on the side, it's a low cut shoe, it feels like a low cut shoe, they don't really add anything to the experience. But the rest of the upper is actually made up of two different layers of material now. That's actually the same material you would regularly find on the standard Evo Power Vigor 1. So what's happening is on the very surface, this color changing material that you see here in this colorway at least, with the 3D texturing, that's an Adapt Light Synthetic with a mesh backing and the AccuFoam dots already in there. So that's why it has the interesting texturing to it. And then underneath that, you have another layer of that mesh base material with AccuFoam dots underneath that. So you have two layers of AccuFoam, which makes this upper still very thin, but technically two layers of what you would normally get with the regular Evo Power Vigor 1, which is really, really interesting. And then in between that, something that again is not really explained well in the, the press release and the tech specs that we've seen, is the lacing system now. Normally the lacing system is loops that were created between basically the separation of the Adapt Light Synthetic, uh, kind of just leaving little gaps for the laces to run through where it attached to the actual mesh underside. These are actual lace loops that are actual straps. So obviously you have loops that stick out for the laces to attach themselves to. But these are actually straps that went all the way to the base of the sole. So you have a lot more structure, a lot more lockdown and general stability through the midfoot on this variation of the shoe versus the regular Evo Power Vigor 1, which not the most responsive shoe in the world if I'm completely honest. You can't have an upper that thin and that soft and also maintain a really responsive sensation. It's not detrimental to the performance, but it's something that you will notice if you're comparing it to something a lot more responsive, like a Hypervenom Phantom 3, as an example. I'm not saying the two shoes are similar, but the responsiveness discrepancy between those two is pretty significant. With this, you add a lot more structure to the midfoot because of this kind of 
cable system that they've essentially created here that I think works really, really well. And it doesn't take away from the natural softness and general flexibility of the shoe. And also it doesn't take away from the comfort, which is obviously very, very important as well. So Adapt Light Synthetic, what is that exactly? It's a synthetic material that's a, a one-way stretch microfiber essentially. So it's designed to flex this way. That's the main reason why they have it. And the reasoning for that is when you strike the ball, the idea with the whole Evo Power concept is that your foot clenches and your toes kind of curl back, your foot kind of curls back a little bit. And most shoes would restrict that movement, that natural range of motion that you'd have when striking a ball with no shoes at all. So that's the goal of the Evo Power line is to not restrict that natural range of motion, which they claim is going to allow for more power, more accuracy, all that good stuff. Does it really translate to that? No, but it does create a very interesting sensation when you strike the ball just right. You get that bend back kind of recoil effect. And it's really one of the only shoes that you can strike the ball with. And when you get the perfect strike, it has this really unique feedback, this, this feeling that you don't get from any other shoe that I'm such a big fan of with the Evo Power line. But I will say this 3D variation doesn't feel quite as flexible as what you'd get from the regular Evo Power Vigor 1. So keep that in mind as well. In regards to the overall touch on the ball, it's got a thin base, but you have these AccuFoam dots, which are basically little pieces of memory foam. And the idea behind that is the upper is thin because they want you to have that pingy sensation for striking, but they also want you to have that little bit of padded sensation for the sake of accuracy. At least those are the conclusions that they came to when designing the original Evo Power. So that's why they incorporated a thin element and a more padded element all in one. The end result is not necessarily a very padded feel. It's a little bit more padded in comparison to the regular Evo Power Vigor one, but for the most part it's thin with just that slight bit of padded sensation to kind of take the edge off, which I think is pretty interesting. Although unlike the regular Evo Power as well, they didn't include the AccuFoam dots running through the middle of the foot where the laces are, which you would get again on that regular Evo Power. So there are definitely some interesting differences between this one and the regular one. But the end result is not necessarily that different experience in terms of overall striking the ball. At least that's what I found. The overall touch and stuff feels pretty similar to me. These are just ever so slightly thicker because you have two base layers of material as opposed to just one. So definitely an interesting boot. Moving on to the heel area, you have an internal plastic heel counter that remains the same in comparison to the regular version. Uh, it is of course a low cut shoe as you guys can see. Internally, it has a smooth synthetic su suede liner with a lot less padding than the regular version. It's actually pretty raw back there in terms of how much padding is there. There's almost none at all, but it seems to fit quite well. I didn't have any issues with discomfort, which is really, really nice. The insole is fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. Same as the regular Evo Power mesh liner on top, single layer of red foam, and then it's got these perforated yellow foam inserts, pretty much the whole way of the in, whole length of the insole. So a decent amount of underfoot padding here from the stock insole, not too bad at all. And then moving on to the outsole, uh, the sole plate and stud pattern, it's identical to that of the regular Evo Power. They haven't changed a thing, which is not a bad thing at all, because it's actually one of the best sole plates and stud patterns out there, in my opinion. I really like how it feels, at least. So it's their gradual stability frame. That's basically what describes the sole plate. So you can see it's got an interesting design running through the midfoot. And the idea here is that from heel to toe, it gets uh, less and less stiff. So it's gonna be stiffest at the heel. And then as you get to the toe forefoot area, it's a lot more flexible. Not only this way, but also having that ability to bend backwards, which you wouldn't normally find with most sole plates. So it's less stiff at the front, more stiff towards the middle and back. And then I guess the middle parts, that middle ground, if you will. And it just has this nice range of motion. It's super, super natural to run in these. And it makes the shoes break in process along with the soft upper, basically non-existent. If you're looking for great comfort out of the box, this has that for you, both with the upper as well as the sole plate. Now, of course, the stud pattern, also very, very interesting. And it, it too, just like the rest of the shoe, is designed around striking the ball. So you can see the bladed studs, they seem kind of randomly placed, but it's actually in the pattern that you would plant your foot to strike a ball. So you would land on the outside of your heel, kind of teeter back towards the inside, then teeter back towards the outside, go even more, and then eventually finish off on this inside stud. So it's kind of like a pattern here that they've developed again, through their testing and when they were kind of working on the designer for the shoe uh, to come up with this pattern. And then you have the conical studs in between just to give you good traction overall. 
Uh, the studs themselves are fairly long. It's a firm ground stud pattern and it's a really, really good one. It's really aggressive, but at the same time, it doesn't feel clingy or anything like that. And because it's so flexible as well, you always have as many studs under your feet as possible just because the, move, the, the shoe moves really nicely with your foot. And again, it's a great stud pattern in terms of overall traction. If you're looking for something more aggressive, that's kind of what this has on offer. So as a package, it's definitely very interesting. I think to me, the big reason why you would want this shoe over the regular Evo Power Vigor 1 is mainly down to structure. If you want something that is a little bit more responsive, a little bit more of a locked in solid sensation on your foot, I think that these straps here for the lacing system, giving you that extra midfoot and forefoot stability makes a big difference in the overall experience of the shoe. I personally do prefer the slightly more padded feel to the upper as well, but again, it's really a matter of personal preference. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a better shoe than the regular Evo Power Vigor 1, even though it costs $55 more. This is almost like a situation like we have with the X-Line, where you have the X16.1 and the X16 Plus Pure Chaos. They're two top end models within the same lineup. One's not necessarily better than the other. There's a price difference, obviously, but really you should be picking the, between the two based on personal preference, rather than one simply being better than the other. Everyone's gonna like something a little bit different. So. It's good, I like it more personally, but you might not like it more. It depends on what you're looking for. Uh, the other thing to talk about in regards to this shoe is the weight, which in a size 9.5 US, these guys weigh in at 7.6 ounces, which is relatively lightweight. Gonna be very similar to a lot of top end models. And I think lighter than a lot of people would expect from this style of shoe, even though once you hold them in your hands, they feel very, very light. Um, and in comparison to the regular Evo Power Vigor 1, the 3D version is about 0.3.4 ounces more. So they're technically slightly heavier on a scale, but on feet, really difficult to tell a difference in regards to weight. So that should not be the deciding factor at all. And as far as the overall aesthetics and styling of the shoe is concerned, it has pretty much the same general graphics you'd find on the regular Evo Power Vigor 1. But of course, they added the texturing on the surface, which I know a lot of people don't like the look of that. I personally don't mind it at all. I think it suits the design of the shoe pretty nicely and it has a very modern look overall. But this kind of chameleon effect they have on this colorway, I think looks awesome. You can see as I move it around, it kind of shifts from like a teal turquoise color to a purple, which uh, again, I just really like this. And then of course you have the black Puma form stripe and the power branding there on the medial side. Really interesting, the black running through the middle with the laces, as well as the knitted material. And then the sole plate is mostly black in color with a little bit of that kind of diamond graphic to mimic the dots and texturing on the surface. And then the studs are a combination of white and black colors. So overall, I think it's a very cool looking shoe, but let me know what your opinions are down below in the comments of this video. With that said, let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So you can see on the right boot, I actually swapped out the stock black laces for some turquoise reflective SR4U replacement laces. I thought it looked really cool just with the color shift because it does pretty much change to this lighter turquoise color. You can see it in the light. I really like how that looks. I like how it accents. So if you guys are interested in a pair of SR4U laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description of this video. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. So getting them on very straightforward. I would say these are easier to get on than the regular Evo powers just because the centerpiece is more stretchy being a different material versus a thinner mesh that doesn't have quite as much, I guess, elasticated sensation to it. These, these will stretch, this material is like very, very stretchy, which is actually really nice and it's fine. It can be stretchy because you have the laces to secure everything. So getting them on really, really straightforward, super, super easy which is nice. You can't say that about all modern shoes nowadays. So tie these up really quickly and you'll definitely notice as you tie them up that you get a lot of tension from these straps that run all the way through the midfoot on both sides, something you would not get on the regular Evo Power Vigor 1. So that's definitely a plus in my opinion. But pull these tight, then just tuck it in the side just because that's something that I like to do. Oh, struggling. There we go. But here is a look at the shoes on feet. And again, out of the box, this is still one of the most comfortable shoes, whether you go for this version or the regular one. Uh, they're so soft, they're so flexible. The material has no rigidity to it whatsoever. And it's pretty much good to go. You're not really gonna have to break these in all that much. You're pretty much just gonna get used to how they feel. And I think for most people, they're gonna be very, very comfortable from the get-go, which is definitely a good thing. 
As far as the width is concerned, they've got a decent amount of width to them. So I think this is one of those shoes that's going to fit just about anybody, even if you do have wider feet, just because there is some forgiveness and stretchiness to this material. And of course, the stretchy mesh base that the shoe has as well. So overall, I think these will fit just about anybody. And as far as the overall shape is concerned, that's definitely worth talking about. It doesn't have a perfectly rounded toe. It has a little bit of an anatomic shaping to it. So it comes to a bit of a point at the big toe and then kind of curves around like the natural shape of the foot. Some people really don't like that. Personally, it does not bother me at all. So again, everyone's gonna have their own preferences in regards to this kind of thing. If you haven't tried it before and you're worried, I wouldn't be too worried. I think most people honestly won't even notice the difference in terms of playing. But I know some people have tried this and they don't like it, but again, that's, I think few and far between as far as how that experience ends up happening. And as far as sizing is concerned, they run a half size small, just like the regular Evo powers and pretty much the Evo speed line from Puma as well. So instead of wearing my usual size nine US, I bump it up to a 9.5 and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it guys for my review of the Puma Evo Power Vigor 3D1, the knitted variation of the Evo Power that isn't quite as knitted as I thought it would be. Anyways, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $275 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.